The SCP Foundation has returned. Oh boy, well, as you may have noticed guys, it's been quite a while since we've peered our heads through the dusty filing cabinet of the SCP Foundation, filled to the brim with some of the most terrifying anomalous entities and mind-boggling nasties ever written by a human hand. Really, the SCP Foundation is an awesome demonstration of what can be achieved when you essentially crowdsource horror, harnessing the hive mind of some wild and vivid imaginations and giving life to some of the craziest creatures ever created. And in that case, there are some SCP entries that we really need to talk about. So let's take a look. Hello horror fans, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the Scary Channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host Jack Finches. And today we're curious to take a look at the top five SCP monsters you really need to read about. Roll the clip. <laughs> For the curious amongst you, of course, that clip was from 2012's horror extravaganza, The Cabin in the Woods, which coincidentally has become the perfect cinematic description for detailing the SCP Foundation as a whole. Also, it's an awesome movie, so yeah, any excuse really. And even more also, but if you're scratching your head thinking, what the hell is an SCP Foundation? Then please, take a look at our Lore Explored video where we take a much deeper dive into the head canon, and all will be revealed later. Hopefully anyway, let's begin, shall we? Kicking off at number 5, SCP-2490. Now, whilst it is certain that there are literally thousands upon thousands of vile and terrifying creatures lurking in the confines of the SCP Foundation, thankfully for us, there are also a whole host of brave and capable personnel trying their utmost to keep them all at bay. For fans of the Foundation, then I'm sure you'll all be aware of the many mobile task forces that have since been detailed, who make up incredibly capable special forces that specialise in these anomalous entities and risk their life, limb, and their own sanity in battling the forces of cosmic evil. But um, this entry, 2490, yeah, this one has something to say about that, essentially subverting the safety of what a mobile task force is meant to deliver, and instead hope to high heaven that will never be stalked by this horrifying hunter. That's only if you work in the SCP Foundation, though, by the way, civilians, so yeah, you've got other stuff to worry about. As the record states, SCP-2490 refers to a modified human being believed to previously have been Chaos Insurgency Special Operative Alpha-19, who has long since stalked countless Foundation employees throughout the 20th century. The thing is though, 2490's head is composed of a single oblong beige capsule, of which two eyes have been painted with no other facial features being present. As it approaches its victims, 2490 is reported to scuttle toward them like a crab, reportedly without moving its legs. And once it locks onto its victims, there is no turning back back as once it's locked in, it drills into the target's skull, leaving behind small puncture marks as it drains fragments of their brain tissue and cerebral cortex, replacing them with the same strange liquid that it secretes. Following an attack, SCP-2490 will also disappear into thin air, taking with it a random SCP that it previously worked with, whether both of them seemingly just vanish from existence, before it appears again to hunt its next target. Later. Why? No one has any idea. But once it locks on, it locks on. And a horrifying pill-headed shaped humanoid drains your brain matter. No thank you. It's a good job that I don't work for the foundation anymore. Swinging in at number four, the diva. And it's no secret that over here at Top 5 Scary Videos, we love ourselves some ancient civilizations and long buried mysteries of time forgotten. It just goes without saying, really, and if that's the particular flavour that you're looking for here, then look no further than this report on a horrifying, cannibalistic, theocratic civilization, the Diva, otherwise known as SCP-140, which thankfully for us, isn't exactly a monster per se, but instead a book about a monstrous civilization that also desires to return to our world if it had the chance to. You see, SCP-140 manages to portray so many horrifying creatures and creations that if they ever were real then we'd probably need an entire other foundation just to contain them. So let's count our lucky stars that they're not real, right? And instead it's just some haunted, cursed book passed from curious historian to curious historian who are then driven mad by the ancient blood magic bound by the ink. Oh yeah, forgot to mention that point. As the record states, SCP-140 is a hard copy book with an unremarkable black binding and an unknown number of white pages. It is titled A Chronicle of the Divas, and readers admit to feelings of paranoia, unease and nausea whilst they're reading it, but are also compelled to keep reading by some anomalous curiosity. Hmm. The book itself details an ancient civilization referred to as the Divas, who originated in what is now South Central Siberia, a civilization that demonstrated fierce militarism, conquest, ancestor worship, and most importantly, gruesome human sacrifice. Throughout their reign through a facious thaumaturgic rituals, the Divites produced a wide variety of horrifying relics and creatures, many of which bear a startling resemblance to several other SCP entries. Essentially, although it's purposely left ambiguous, 140 are potentially the anomalous creators of many SCP entities some cannibalistic civilization of monstrosities that ushered in an age of pure and terrifying evil. Thankfully for us, it's just a book, right? Right? <laughs> 
Next up at number 3, SCP-1461. And who needs just one single monster when you can have an entire English manor full to the brim with them? Well, 57 of them to be precise. The sole inhabitants of the House of the Worm that would make any horror movie wince at the thought of roaming through its decrepit corridors in fear of being cannibalised by these poor helpless machine men souls of sorts. Yeah, the basic premise for SCP-1461 is pretty damn harrowing actually. Essentially as the record states, 1461 is an English manor built roughly around the year 1890 that came to the attention of the foundation back in November of 1941 after the dwelling and its sub-level facilities just vanished out of thin air. However, after an 11 day period of its absence, it rematerialized back into the world, although as you may imagine, it was changed somewhat. You see, as the foundation discovered, the manor was owned by an undisclosed World War I veteran who after being injured during the Battle of the Somme, returned back to England with an incredibly nihilistic view of society. There, essentially, he went mad and he reorganised his staff members into a bizarre cult that worshipped a creature known only as the Worm. And yeah, it gets worse. Because as the record continues to reveal, in the confines of the manor, SCP-1461 contains approximately 57 humanoid entities, which through an unknown process have been augmented with a series of crude mechanical implants of an otherwise unknown origin. Each of them have been uniquely augmented with metallic teeth and claw-like protrusions from their hands, giving them lethal close quarters combat abilities. The majority of them have reinforced spinal columns and nearly all of them have had their organs replaced with prosthetic equivalents. As you may imagine, they appear to possess little to no higher brain function or even retain any sense of their self and instead they act entirely on canine levels of instinct and intellect. Within the confines of the manor they build easily hidden and defensible nests and spend their time roaming the anomalous corridors hunting for scraps of food or even cannibalizing the flesh remaining on the other 56 of their counterparts. And not only that but it's also theorized that the house itself is controlling them through some anomalous means and yeah as if SCP-1461 wasn't already terrifying enough. Coming in at number two SCP-701. And of course what better way to combine our shared passions for the horror form than to highlight the SCP Foundation's own version of a pretty iconic anomaly in its own right. Essentially to cut a long story even shorter, SCP-701 is the Foundation's version of the Yellow King. But in classic SCP Foundation manner, this one is equally terrifying in its own right. Let me introduce you to the Hanged King, the last thing you ever want to see if you somehow find yourself watching an anomalous theatre production. Yeah, the brilliance behind this Foundation entry is that it takes the essence of fear that was laid out in Robert W. Chambers' remarkable cosmic horror novella, The King in Yellow, and brings with it a facelift of a much more physical kind. Also, the Foundation's version, The Hanged King, is just freaking creepy. So yeah, there's that too. As the record states, SCP-701, aka The Hanged King's Tragedy, is a Caroline-era revenge tragedy performed in five acts. However, as is the case with many things SCP Foundation, all is not as it may seem, and performances of the play are associated with a sudden psychotic and suicidal behaviour amongst both observers and participants of the play, resulting in the manifestation of a mysterious figure classified as SCP-701-1, aka The Hanged King. And since the play's creation over 300 years ago, 701 has claimed the lives of thousands of individuals. However, not all performances of the play end with an outbreak, and only around 36% of performances that have actually ended with SCP-701 events. You see, as it appears most commonly, the Hanged King will emerge during the banquet scene of Act 5, where the cast then will either murder each other or commit suicide, where afterward rioting will break out in the audience, tearing each other to shreds, and any survivors of this event will then be permanently comatose or psychotic. As you may imagine, the Foundation has gone to great lengths in destroying all known copies of the Hanged King's tragedy, and yet still curious playwrights across the ages seem anomalously drawn to it. Yeah, not gonna lie, but this one is one of my favorite SCP entries of all time. So in that case, give it a read. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, the Vasna of Savi. And talking of my favorite SCP entry of all time, this one is exactly that, really. Although this is a case study and part of a wider grouping of texts in the foundation known as the Sarkic Cult, the Vasna of Savi are my favorite all-time entry of the SCP Foundation. And I would implore anyone that hasn't yet taken a look at it to read it, because if it's anomalous ancient practices you're looking for, steeped on top of some remarkably well-written fictional anthropology, combined with a surreal and bizarre depiction of a cult of people that would make both The Wicker Man and Midsummer blush, then please read this entry. If you know anything about the wider canon of the Foundation, then you'll know that there are two groups of ancient religions, known as the Sarkics and the Mechanites, that have been at war for 
time forgotten. Also, side note, read about them too if you haven't because they're equally complex and terrifying. One facet of the former religion though with the Sarkics is that they're obsessed with bio-organic matter, otherwise known as the flesh. Some of them are entirely evil, hell-bent on homogenizing organic matter into one single pile of nothingness, but a particular tribe of them, otherwise known as the Vasna of Savi, are completely different. Now, I can't really do this piece of literature justice in such a small segment, but the matter of fact and incredible attention to detail in this document exemplifies exactly what is so compelling about the SCP Foundation as a writing project. As it states, the Vasna of Savi are a group of indigenous finno ergic people that inhabit the Arctic area of Satmi, a region which encompasses northern Norway, Sweden, Finland and the Kola Peninsula of Russia. Now at first glance these Vasa are no different to the local Sami people, but when you peer closer, holy moly, these guys are an entirely different type of curious. The thing is, what the Vasa seem to exemplify is taking the horror concept of using human flesh as a vessel for inspiring fear, but then somehow it makes it convincing, which is a really weird feeling. Honestly, this case study is so damn convincing that you'll find yourself drawn to an indigenous group of people that worship flesh so much so that they construct entire buildings out of it. And after reading it, strangely enough, you may want to join them. It's like the end of Midsummer, just with more reason. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird, but it's brilliant. Read. Get back. For the curious amongst you, that particular clip was from 2012's The Cabin in the Woods. And for fans of both the SCP Foundation and Top 5 Scary Videos, you'll know that movie in particular has become somewhat of a meme, given the fact that the latter half of Cabin in the Woods is pretty much the SCP Foundation on the silver screen. And whilst there are many SCP fan-made movies going that deserve your attention, I don't know, Cabin in the Woods still brings an anomalous smile to my face. Also, it's just an awesome movie, so any excuse really. Give it a watch. Anyway. On with the show. Kicking off at number five. SCP-280. And when we're talking about monsters, what better way to begin than with a little anomalous humanoid smoke monster whose corporeal form appears out of thin air to wreak havoc just for the sake of it. Thankfully for us though, all it takes is a good old fashioned flashlight to subdue this creature and shine the light on its all encompassing evil to banish it back to whence it came. But if you don't have a flashlight or any other manner of illumination, Holy moly, you're in for a uh, pretty terrible time. As the record states, SCP-280 is a black human-shaped mass with two large white eyes where its head should be and two hands with very long and very thin fingers. When we talk about just straight-up shadow monsters, some of the themes encapsulated in the SCP Foundation are pretty few and far between, actually. But what is so remarkable and terrifying here is that SCP-280 is literally the monster that may or may not be lurking in your closet or under your bed at night. It harkens on that theme of hiding under a sheet with a flashlight in the dead of night. Just this time, it doesn't care about your feelings and it will kill you. You see, SCP-280 appears to be wholly composed of matter that can gain or lose its corporeal form. The matter itself is incredibly black, almost vanta black, and resembles smoke as it dissipates in and out of existence. When in its vicinity, SCP-280 will slowly move toward any human beings and attempt to attack them. In fact, SCP-280 appears to sense human life from wherever it is, and no limit has yet been found on this ability. And once it finds its prey, it will use its hands to pull and tear at the subject's body, resulting in massive physical trauma, always resulting in a vile and gruesome death. 2A0 does not eat, breathe, or sleep. It does not ingest any of the tissue of its victims or appear to have any other use for its murderous ways. It kills, then it disappears in a puff of smoke. And it is literally the worst possible thing you could ever imagine at a slumber party. Bring a flashlight. Swinging in at number four, SCP-354. And similar to many of our other entries on the previous part one of this list, SCP-354 is a bit of a monstrous anomaly in the sense that it isn't just pertinent to one monster, but a whole host of them. Well, potentially anyway, because really, no one truly knows the full extent of this particular entry. As the record states, 354 is a pool of red liquid discovered in the polar areas of northern Canada. The liquid in question is that of a consistency similar to that of human blood, hence the colloquial name in the foundation of Blood Pond. Now, that's a death metal ban, if I've ever heard one. You see, despite its nomenclature, SCP-354 is explicitly not of any sort of biological nature. In fact, the pool does not have any definitive banks, and it appears that the soil of the area mixes with the liquid until, at a certain given point, there is just no more soil, and the liquid and ground become mostly solid. The deeper the pool goes, the denser the liquid becomes, and if SCP-354 has a bottom, it has yet to be reached. And here's the real kicker, and here's the reason it deserves our 
our monstrous attention. You see, periodically, a number of entities have emerged from the pool, extremely hostile and incredibly dangerous, that have attempted to escape from the enclosure. These have varied from a giant bat, a bear sized mammalian creature covered in razor sharp spines that was virtually bulletproof and had to be vaporized via napalm. SCP 354 have spat out humanoid reptiles, giant tentacular sea creatures, feline creatures made out of both pure magma and solid ice, even what appeared to be a metallic humanoid that resembled the Terminator. Really, the extent of SCP-354 is kind of staggering, and the actual concept of its anomalous design is incredibly intriguing when we relate it to several other entries that appear to function in a similar manner, actually. Essentially, it's a pool of blood in the high Arctic of northern Canada that seems to spit out the most terrifying entities that you could ever imagine, and well, no one knows why. Yeah. This one is a particular favourite of mine. Next up at number 3, SCP-1730. And talking of favourites, this one kind of takes the cake when it comes to anomalous locations that appear to spit out all manners of horrifying entities. Have you ever heard the phrase, what happened to Site-13? Well, that's because it's one of the most elaborate cover-ups that has ever occurred in the Foundation's history. And as the darkest stain on its even darker track record, you'll certainly understand that that is kind of saying something. It's no secret that the Foundation is hella messed up. They know that, we know that, and yet they still want to cover this particular entry up. You see, whilst there is far more to it, first let's give it the exposure that it deserves. As the record states, SCP-1730 is a large complex of structures 15 kilometers of the US-Mexico border, located within the Big Bend Ranch State Park, discovered by the Foundation on June 5th of an undisclosed year. Due to the isolated nature of the complex and the low survival rate of individuals that come into contact with it, it is unknown how long the site has laid about abandoned and undiscovered before it was brought to life. And you might be thinking, hang on, how could the SCP Foundation have a site that it didn't even know about? And well, here's where things get timey-wimey, because SCP-1730 is actually from an alternate dimension, where the SCP Foundation is the embodiment of all evil instead of the grey administrators that we know them to be. You see, in this parallel universe, instead of safely containing the anomalies that the Foundation secure, their staff and researchers brutally torture and experiment on them before dissolving them into an anomalous toxic black sludge, referred to as the body pit. If you think D-class personnel are treated badly in our universe, then well, put it this way. In this this parallel universe, their doctors don't even have names, just ID numbers. You see, Site 13 was originally overseen by a psychopath named Elliot Emerson, but you see, all of these terrifying creatures that were spawned from these vile experiments, eventually they revolted against this human overlord, and well, the lunatics had taken over the asylum, put it that way. And if that wasn't enough, Site 13 just so happened to appear in our universe through anomalous means, and yeah, if you want to know what happened there, Please dare to read some of the exploration logs in this entry because that is a horror story that you need to check out. Coming in at number two, SCP-400. All right. On the topic of monsters, let's get back to the true meaning of the theme and forget about corporeal smoke murderers and red pools of death for a moment and imagine, if you will, one of the most vile and disgusting creatures in the entirety of the SCP Foundation. While actually by creatures, what I actually mean is an entire species of them. And by them, I mean bugs. Ah. And gross bugs too. And I will forewarn you, this is possibly one of the most disturbing SCP entries in the entirety of the Foundation. And if you are a mother, I would highly recommend skipping the nightmare fuel that is about to ensue. Honestly, I'm not exaggerating, this is one of the most messed up entries in the entire Foundation. Okay, let's see what we can do. As the record states, SCP-400 is the collective designation for an anomalous species of arthropod that vaguely resembles the common pill bug. Whilst individually they are similar, they can be distinguished from the pill bug by the bright red striping patterns on their dorsal carapace. So what's the big deal? Bugs, right? Well, collectively, SCP-400 is a parasitic organism which feeds on human mammary secretions. Human breast milk. SCP-400 feeds on human breast milk, and how does it get that? <sighs> Jeez, guys. SCP-400 are anomalously attracted toward infants that then burrow into them as they sleep and use the infant as their host, essentially becoming an active colony. During a 12-week period, the active colony then anomalously attracts the mother of the infant, and through their horrific design, they lull the mother into an almost catatonic, zombified state, only able to care for the infested infant by breastfeeding it. And then they use the affected mother as another host for them to continue their vile and abominable life cycle. 
I'm gonna stop there because really there is much, much more to this particular entry and it's one of the most difficult SCPs that I've read. If you dare, take a look at SCP-400 because whilst being entirely repulsive and horrific and just so damn terrifying and disgusting, it's also one of the most original horror concepts that I've seen in a while. So, yeah, SCP-400 everybody, no thank you. And finally coming in at number one spot, Taboo. Because while certainly SCP-400 takes the cake in pure gross outness, this particular entry known as 4000 Issue, or more colloquially simply Taboo, as so far as the actual horror creation behind it, this one is perhaps the most well conceived entry in the entire foundation. And also, it's going to make things a little difficult to explain, because in the head canon of this entry, uh, essentially it cannot be described under threat of unleashing one of the most powerful key to class anomalies known to the SCP Foundation, and so it goes to great lengths in outlining the ambiguity of its potential consequences. But yeah, that's not gonna stop us. Now let's see if I can remember my issue class training again. Oh yeah. As the record states, the SCP in question is an extra dimensional forested area that exhibits numerous anomalous qualities, including a hazardous phenomenon of sorts. It is accessed by performing a ritual in the woods where you need to speak carefully, where a well then emerges and a path appears that guides you to the area that SCP-4000 exists within. This unnamed world does not adhere to the constraints of any linear space and a variety of anomalous entities native to this nameless habitat have since been documented. And many of these monsters appear as quasi-humanoid entities with abnormal limbs often displaying themselves behind the dense trees that occur in the forest. In truth, essentially SCP-4000 is what we would refer to as the Fae. You see, for those of you familiar with some of the founding headcanon of the SCP Foundation, as outlined in SCP-001, the factory, before the Foundation were fully established, they were at war with a species of creatures known as the Fae, who were eventually all but wiped out during the factory siege. You see, whatever weapon unmade them, it didn't actually destroy them entirely, but instead it banished them to this strange, bizarre and terrifying Glen, that shall otherwise remain unnamed. Now, if you ever find yourself trapped in this fey and under the threat of these anomalous creatures, remember four things. One, don't call anything by a consistent name, and two, don't answer to any consistent name. Names are powerful things, and if your name becomes someone else's, who's to say what else is theirs? Three, always accept their gifts, but do not consume their gifts, and four, if a ghost tell you it isn't a creature of the fey, obey it. And yeah, I think that should be about it, I think. Ah, what if I forget like I'm, I'm forgetting something I think. Oh well. Coming in at number 5, SCP-1548. 1548 is the designation of various anomalous solar phenomena, primarily occurring at the south pole of the sun. There are three types of known SCP-1548 events. SCP-1548-1, six equidistant ovular sunspots approximately 40,000 kilometers by 15,000 kilometers in size, appear. The ends of the sunspots converge after 23 hours, often accompanied by the formation of a solar prominence that typically takes the shape of thaumaturgic symbols. A coronal mass ejection will then occur around the sunspots lasting 11 hours with the prominence dissipating after 5. Then we have SCP-15482. Begin similar to 1, a solar prominence then forms from the site of the sunspots and breaks off from the sun, moving away from it and likely entering into stellar space. The events last for 2 hours. Then comes along 3, sunspots from thaumaturgical symbols which range in size this can occur in conjunction with other events or separately. Unlike the previous two phenomena, these sunspots do not commonly manifest in any single area. Foundation satellites Malik Bell 1 through 10 will monitor the south pole of the sun for SCP-1548 under protocol Koyash Vier. All Foundation space station and off-planet bases within the solar system will have the monitoring of the sun as their secondary mission objective. Connections will be maintained with major space agencies under Operation Stygian Iris for enhanced monitoring of the anomaly, with accurate information on the phenomena restricted to specified personnel. Coming in at 4, SCP-978. Now this is a personal favourite of mine, simply because it is just so sad. You'll see why in a minute. SCP-978 appears to be a standard chrome and black Polaroid camera that operates the same as a standard camera. However, when a subject is pictured with SCP-978, the photograph that develops shows not what the subject was doing at 
the time of the photo, but instead what the subject wanted to be doing. This effect appears to be, for the most part, random, sometimes showing drastic changes and deeply suppressed desires, or simple changes and alterations to the subject or their surroundings. SCP-978 is to be kept in security locker HJ-12 at Site-17, and only to be removed or handled by personnel with level 2 security clearance or higher. Testing parties may request extra film and printing paper at their leisure. SCP-978 is not to be used for blackmail, entertainment or personal reasons, and all photographs produced have to be catalogued along with full testing description. Requests to destroy photographs may be processed by level 4 security clearance or higher personnel at the discretion of the testing party. Coming in at number 3, SCP-131. SCP-131-A and 131-B, also known as the iPods, are a pair of teardrop shaped creatures roughly 30 centimeters in height, with a single blue eye in the middle of their bodies. 131-A is burnt orange in color, while 131-B is mustard yellow. At the base of each creature is a wheel-like protrusion which allows for motion, suggesting that the creatures may be biochemical in origin. The iPods can also move surprisingly fast, covering over 60 meters in a matter of seconds. However, they seem to lack a braking system, which has led to some rather spectacular mishaps involving the creatures and other Foundation personnel. The iPods seem to have intelligence of common house cats and are insatiably curious. Most of the time, they simply roll around the facility, observing personnel at work and cats catching peaks at other safe call SCPs. The iPods also seem to respond well to any affection given to them and will quickly bond to the giver of said affection, much in the same way a puppy bonds with a human being. They will follow anyone or anything they've made a bond with, even into normally restricted areas. No special safety procedures are to be taken with A and B. They are free to travel about Site 19 so long as they do not attempt to enter any restricted areas or attempt to leave the facility. Casual contact is permitted, but it is recommended that such contact be kept to a minimum to prevent the creatures forming an attachment. Coming in at number 2, SCP-1983. 1983-1 is a one-story farmhouse that was abandoned way back in 1968 after a series of murders that were supposedly performed by a satanic cult. The front door of SCP-19831, when opened, appears to contain a spatial anomaly. Neither matter nor light has been observed to exit the doorway, aside from SCP-19832, which speaking of, are bipedal creatures approximately 1.8 meters tall. They are vaguely humanoid and entirely black in color. They are known to be aggressive and will engage any human on sight. When an instance of SCP-19832 comes into contact with a human, they extend an upper limb into the human's chest cavity, without any apparent damage to skin or tissues. Through unknown means, they then extract the heart, killing the human. Once it has acquired a human heart, Heart, the instance of SCP-19832 will return to SCP-19831. Now, silver munitions fired while offering prayer is the only known method of killing SCP-19832. Once killed, the bodies appear to disintegrate, leaving a small layer of sulfur. SCP-19831 is accessible through other entrances as well, including windows, the back door, and entrances cut into the back of SCP-19831. However, the front room does not appear to exist inside of the house, and instead doors that should lead to the front room instead lead to other doors inside the building. Outpost 54 has been built on the land surrounding SCP-1983 and is disguised as a chemical plant, which serves as barracks for choir boys. All entry points into Outpost 54 are to be guarded at all times. And finally coming in at number 1, SCP-1104. 1104 is a species tentatively identified as a member of Order Chelicerata and is also referred to as the Nose Crab. The life the cycle of SCP-1104 comprises at least two distinct phases, the first being a larval stage and at irregular intervals. Larval SCP-1104 are expelled from larva tubes within Site-104 at concentrations up to 200 individuals per cubic meter. These remain airborne for as long as 14 hours and have been documented to travel under favorable weather conditions. When inhaled, larvae will adhere to nasal mucosa, where they excrete any array of H1 receptor antagonists that suppress both local inflammation 
and implantation of further larvae. Over a period of six to eight months, SCP-1104 will grow and extend appendages through the host's ethmoidal canals. Now, hosts generally remain unaware of the presence of SCP-1104, apart from persistent but non-specific headaches. As time passes, 1104 will apply pressure to the host's optic nerves, causing obstruction of the central visual field. The pressure is applied selectively when the host is not oriented toward the local gradient of atmospheric hydrogen sulfide, which SCP-1104 can detect through the host's inhalations. Although humans display the same instinctive aversion as any animal to visual disturbances caused by SCP-1104, the behavioural response is not a compulsion, and hosts may defy the influence, especially if informed of the nature of the SCP. Attempts at surgically removing or poisoning a fully developed SCP-1104 result in immediate elicitation of its exit response. Complete destruction of SCP-1104 is endorsed, should adequate means be developed. While individual instances of 1104 are easily terminated, it is endemic to subsurface geological formations, rendering the primary pollution of SCP-1104 inaccessible to convenient lethal agents. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list? Were there any scary SCP monsters that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below, and perhaps we can do a part four.